All right. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for joining me on another great episode of your favorite political talk show, The Truth with Ben Jokes. It is another day in Nigeria and the battle for survival amidst increasing hardship continues. And when we say the future is not auspicious, we are not being pessimistic. We are merely drawing our conclusions from the actions and inactions of government. For the past 14 months, Nigerians have persistently been fed lies from government either to make themselves look good or to convince Nigerians that the harsh realities they face in their daily lives are to be accepted with joy. And every single time, these lies get exposed. But the APC keeps dishing them out. This is a clear indication that they are not ready to do the right thing, not now, not ever. And this was why Nigerians flooded the streets for the end bad governance protest. Citizens came out to express their pain and make demand of government to do the wish of the people. But instead of carefully looking at the demands of the masses, after the protest, Tinubu quickly called for a council of states meeting and all former presidents and head of states, save for Obasanjo and the ailing Babangida, attended. Now, the aim of every council of states meeting is to counsel and advise the man in power on how to properly govern, to tell him his mistakes so that he can improve. But in the case of this regime, they turned it into a tool of propaganda. That shows that they are not willing to improve. They turned it into a tool of propaganda and they began using paid media platforms to mislead the public, saying that ex-presidents passed a vote of confidence in the Tinubu administration. And just hours ago, the past presidents too began using the same media to expose this regime that they never passed a vote of confidence. And not only did they not pass a vote of confidence, the motion was raised during the meeting, but they refused to second it. Before I show you how Tinubu and his cabinet was exposed and how Nigerians reacted, let me quickly show you this video. There seems to be a memo on how to govern with complete disregard. That memo seems to be kept in one of the drawers in Asorok. Kept there, you know, maybe by previous administrations, but then more chapters were added to that memo by former President Buhari. That same memo seems to have been pulled out of one of these Asorok drawers and is now in use by the current president. It's the only explanation that I have to understand the meaning of a work stay. Because can anyone in Asorok help Nigerians understand better the actual meaning of a work stay? How does the president of a country just randomly get on his presidential jet and go to another country without any clear reason or explanation, without any stated diplomatic intentions or anything that sounds like it? Just travel out of his own country and go spend as many days as he chooses in a different country. Keep in mind that while Mr. President is on this mysterious work stay, 20 Nigerian medical students have been kidnapped and are still reportedly held in the custody of their capt uh, captors. While Mr. President is on this work stay all the way in France, Nigerians are fighting for their lives back at home with the highest levels of inflation. Petrol scarcity that is getting into its second week, the same levels of unemployment and poverty that his predecessor left. Complete uncertainty as to where the country is headed, amongst many other issues. While Mr. President got on his shiny new jet and is on a work stay in France. It's a seeming complete disregard for the urgency with which to ad address Nigeria's pressing issues. And again, I ask, what exactly is a work stay? Many Nigerians, of course, are asking the same question this morning. Is it common for presidents to choose to work remotely from anywhere in the world? I understand that we're in the age of hybrid work, but does that also apply to presidents? Do we have other presidents from other countries across the world routinely visiting Nigeria and working from Lagos or Abuja or Ibadan or Enugu anywhere? What exactly is a work stay while Nigerians are in captivity? While ASU is again threatening a nationwide strike, the Nigerian president can't just jet off on the presidential jet, which of course is funded by Nigeria's taxpayers' money without a reasonable explanation for the trip. You heard that. 
That was journalist Osaroge on New Central there spitting facts. But is anyone surprised? Tinubu promised to continue from where Buhari stopped and he is doing just that. But as a Nigerian, events like these sometimes get you angry because this is a country that belongs to all of us and some people, few people, are doing all these to the majority. But then again, I rethink and I conclude that it is better for all these to happen. As a matter of fact, I want the disregard for Nigerians by the political class to get worse so that the pain and hardship of Nigerians, especially as it concerns the economy, can worsen so that Nigerians can come out of their docility. Few individuals enslaving a whole nation is not a normal thing. It is not normal at all. There is, there is a mental or spiritual spell that needs to be broken. We have preached and preached against it, but if it will take an extreme level of disregard and economic disaster to let our world sink in, to awaken the people of this country, then so be it. The APC has come to finish this country. They have not held back since 2015 and Nigerians will never know prosperity until they get the APC out. Now, let us look at how Tinubu and his cabinet were exposed. Recall that after the Council of States meeting, this regime began claiming that ex-presidents, especially Jonathan and Buhari, passed a vote of confidence in the Tinubu administration. It became a big topic all over Nigeria. But now, reports coming out is that that news, that information was false. They said no vote of confidence was passed. As a matter of fact, they said the motion was raised, but this ex-president refused to second it. Look at how the papers reported it. Fresh report reveals Council of State did not pass confidence vote on Tinubu. A fresh revelation has emerged, contradicting earlier claims by Kwara State Governor Abdurrahman Abdurazak that the National Council of States passed a vote of confidence in Bola Tinubu at its inaugural meeting last week. It has been uncovered that no such confidence vote was taken. Recall that according to Governor Abdurazak, who also serves as chairman of the Nigeria Governors Forum, the council and the NGF jointly passed a vote of confidence in Tinubu. The high note of the meeting was a unanimous passage of a vote of confidence on Bola Ahmed Tinubu GCFR, Commander-in-Chief of the Nigerian Armed Forces, the Kwara Governor, said. However, a high-ranking official present at the meeting has come forward to dispute the claim, describing it as a dummy sold to reporters. The official said, The Council of State is a serious advisory body comprising esteemed members, including former presidents, heads of states, and top judiciary and legislative officials. The meeting, the source said, therefore cannot be likened to a town hall gathering where such votes are commonly taken. The meeting is a very serious one that has a list of to-do things which we call agenda or agenda. There was nowhere a motion for a debate on whether or not to pass vote of confidence was on the agenda of the meeting. In any case, I know that such votes are passed in a parliamentary system of government and Nigeria runs a presidential system the authority newspaper quoted the official as saying, according to him, after the end of the council meeting, Attorney General of the Federation, Mr. Latif Fagbemi, suggested that in the light of the end bad governance protest, it would be good for the council to show solidarity with Tinubu, offered the official. No sooner had the AGF made the proposal than Senate President Goswila Kwabio rose to in his words, second the motion for council to pass a vote of confidence on Bola Ahmed Tinubu, adding, to be fair, no former president or head of state, nor governors present at the meeting, commented on the motion raised by Fagbemi and Akpabio, he narrated, adding, I'm sure the former leaders at the meeting must have been thoroughly embarrassed by Governor Abdurazak's claim. Former President Goodluck Jonathan and Muhammadu Buhari were physically in attendance at the meeting. What a shame. My God. A whole governor coming out to lie 
and they just made it public the whole media houses people were even debating and people began dragging this ex-president that how can nigerians be suffering like this and you guys you guys are going to pass a vote of confidence and i'm sure that that was why they too began to use the media because you know to come out and say no i didn't pass a vote of confidence it will sound somehow and that was why governor abdrazak went ahead and said that because he knows they would rather ignore them than to come out and say they are lying but they decided to use another decoy by using the media it's flying around everywhere in the media now and as of the time of making this video discussions had started over this lie and look at how nigerians reacted let's take some of the tweet reactions this tweet here by ani omar ronu says fake bishops fake election fake certificates fake childhood pictures fake vote of confidence everything fake it's such a pathetic story and this tweet here by isaac says oh really because how can a sane nigerian pass a vote of confidence on tulumbu's regime when tinubu himself cannot pass a vote of confidence on himself because of his woeful and abysmal below performance after over one year in office mm. and ade Binkpe here says this government is an embarrassment to themselves and nigerians liar liar government unfortunately we allowed this evil woman to get away with the election he rigged. We are all paying for it today. This is so sad. And Austin O'Brien says, I blamed Jonathan for attending that congregation of thieves meeting. See the way Jonathan was dragged for a sin he never committed. Next council of state meeting should have only Buhari and Tinubu and APC governors. That was why Obasanjo refused to attend. But I don't know what is wrong with Jonathan. I don't, I don't just understand the man. If they say you love peace, have you not done enough by leaving the office peacefully without any struggle? I think that is enough. But to continue to frolic with people that are punishing Nigerians like this, it's, it's unbecoming. And this tweet here by Abu Miriam says, Tinubu and Scam can never be separated. Chai. And Arewa Queen here says, this is terrible. Must everything be lies? I'm getting really angry. You never vex so. Because this is just the beginning. And Folusha Obadara says, No wonder they rushed to pass that information. Mm. And it was not even from Ajuri Ngelali or Bayo Nonuga. This time around, it was governor of Kwara State to show you that all of them are the same. And this tweet by Muhammad says, To rephrase, Council of State passed vote of no confidence on Tinubu. That is how to rephrase it. Because the motion was raised. You know, if they just had the meeting and they left, it's a different case. But AGF stood up, Akpabio stood up to raise the motion and they declined to second the motion. And as soon as this update dropped, all APC supporters, the few foolish supporters they still have left, went into hiding. Everywhere quiet. Because some people were debating that issue when they said it that they passed a vote of confidence some people said they don't think it happened that if it did it should have been caught on camera and now the truth has come out and imagine the kind of confusion that this revelation brought into aso rock that confusion can only be imagined it's been over 24 hours since this revelation about the fake vote of confidence was made and Bayon Onuga or Ajuri Ngilali have not responded with any rebuttal. Media men from other media houses have tried to reach him to no avail. I know Ononuga is eventually going to say that since the ex-presidents were silent while Akpabio and the others passed the vote of confidence, their silence was taken as consent. That's what he is going to say eventually. Now you can see that Obasanjo is a genius this was why he refused to attend that meeting he knew what they were trying to do he was a step ahead he knew they were trying to score a cheap political point but for how long will this continue hmm? how long will propaganda continue asu is threatening to go on strike resident doctors are threatening to go on strike labor is threatening to shut everywhere down how long are we going to continue with propaganda no sector is working in Nigeria. Nigerians are frustrated. Propaganda will not do this job. It will not do this job. Recent market survey shows that the prices of food items have increased from the last time we reported it here, which was just a few days ago. Meanwhile, the 
in income of Nigerians are declining, meaning purchasing power is on a steady decline. And of course, 20 medical students kidnapped are still in captivity. Emir of Sokoto was kidnapped, you know, few days ago, and he was killed yesterday. And the kidnappers are yet demanding about 20 million to release his body for burial. What, what a confusion. What a tragedy. But I don't expect anything less. I keep saying it. We never had this level of tragedy in this country before the APC. We had our issues, yes. But as soon as this party was formed, all the problems we had in this country multiplied. And that is why I keep saying that Nigerians will never know peace until we jettison all our sentiments, come together, unite, and kick the APC out of power but until then make i still enter town <laughs> make i go get some Ubonga political news well now go like why because now because of now now i day here so don't go away <laughs>